Hey guys, um, it's a pretty nice day today, pretty hot, but it's nice. So, um, the one thing that's bothered me since I bought this 4Runner is this guy right here. The motorized antenna that doesn't go up or down at all. And when I turn on the key, you can hear the motor inside there, the motor's inside the fender here, up under this plastic you can hear the motor working and it doesn't do anything. So my antenna is just stuck like this. And eventually I'm just gonna go on off-roading or go on a trail or something and hit a branch and it's gonna snap right off. So um, I went out today and I went and picked something up. Went and picked up this guy, 14 inch little whip antenna for the truck it's like a universal whip antenna and i'm not sure how well it's going to work but i don't really care it's mainly going to be for looks for me because i use my phone with like spotify and stuff or whatever so it comes with like a little rubber grommet new grommet and then you can kind of adjust it with these guys which direction you want it to go if you want it straight up or angle or however and then this is just like uh, like a little rubber whip guy I don't know so and then I bought these 168 lights for side markers because mine are out both of them so I'm gonna go ahead and swap those two while we're at it and that's pretty easy that side marker comes out with the single screw that's on top of the light right there take the screw out and you just pop the little side marker out so you can swap out your bulbs these are 168s and it's actually the same as um, the license plate lights that I swapped out in my other video. Same light. I use the LEDs for those, but for these I'm just going to use the Sylvania side marker lights. I didn't want to spend that extra 20 bucks or whatever on LED lights just for parking lights. So, yeah. Okay, so first things first with the antenna. I already swapped out those bulbs and they worked uh, pretty good. I mean it's a bulb like I said you just pull the one screw there at the top of the headlight it's attached to it and then there's like a pop like right here you pull the whole thing out it's good to go so good work so anyway back to the antenna it's not why I was making the video so for the antenna we're gonna have to get to the back of the stereo and you know, I got an aftermarket stereo, but it's all going to be the same, whether you got stock, aftermarket, whatever. Um, you're going to have to pull this whole surround off here, which means you're going to have to get this piece all off, this piece off to get to this piece and take it off. And then I'll probably maybe drop this whole glove box compartment, take it out so I can get a clear route of where I'm gonna run the cable for the antenna to go to the back of the stereo. Like I said, it's not practical. I'm not gonna really use it too much, but if I wanna use it, I still want it to be functional, so. Yeah. Okay, so to remove this guy, you're gonna have to take this metal ring off the top here. I don't know if there's like a special tool for it or anything, but I did have a hammer and a flathead. And then I got these guys, so I was kind of just biting it and turning it. And just be careful that you don't, you know, ding your paint or whatever. I got a couple scratches already there, so. Old ones. But, just be careful that you don't slip and ding your stuff up. Alright, and once you unthread it, the piece comes up over the top. Take everything else off. And now this is ready to drop down out of the truck from underneath here. I got the wheel turned out so I can access that a little better. And just get in there and get whatever these like, what are they, 10 mils, something like that. Take out the bolts that are holding it in place. Get this little plastic surround or uh, wheel well insert out of the way. And then you can access the motor that's in there. You can kind of see it through 
the door jam here. Uh, you can't really see it on the video. There's an antenna mast and a cable right back in there. It goes down into the motor and stuff. It's inside of like a bag. So, work on getting that out. And that comes out pretty easy, easy enough anyway. Just kind of get it out of the way, off to the side, whatever. And then, as you can see, there's the motor. It's held in there by that bolt right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. And then there's your cannon plug for the motor so it can get its power. And I'm just gonna unplug it and maybe wrap that just so it's still there and whatever. I might just tuck it back into the engine bay through that hole out of the way. That way, just unplug it. Never know, I might wanna put it stock or factory or sell it to somebody who wants to go factory, whatever. So go ahead and pull that out and then we'll start pulling all the dash pieces out. Okay, so I took out the door trim at the bottom here with the four screws and the kick panel on the passenger side. So I can access back behind my dusty ass glove box here to get to the antenna cable, which I've identified. It's kind of pain in the ass back behind there. But what I wanted to show you was, okay, this dash piece. So this, so that piece right there where the e-brake is at and everything and the window it just pops right up. You lift up the little compartment here, pops right up, pull your e-brake up so it gives you some room. Undo your little plugs here. And then this one, you gotta pop it out of the way. It just pops right up. So you can get to that one because this actually covers over that a little bit. So you gotta pop that out of the way. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, your AC button, right? It actually pulls out so your AC push the button and pop it out and you can grab on it and pull it out so you can take off your little face plate there and the reason for that is different models maybe I don't know this is a 96 my father-in-law has a 99 I pulled his dash a few times and there's a screw here and a screw right here that holds my dash on to access the radio his doesn't have that his will pop right off you just pull on it the whole thing pulls off the face and everything comes off so maybe they got smarter for accessibility on the newer models of the third gens but like i said his is a 99 his doesn't have those screws you got to access it just pops it off mine it's got those couple screws so we'll get those out and get this out and start tracking that um tracing down where that cable is going to run for the new antenna okay so we got her out like i said those two screws were holding that dash piece in right there and right there and then once you pop it you'll unplug you know your plugs there's the light for the ashtray and then you got a couple more little this is the cigarette lighter and whatever. and then the wiring harness for the aftermarket stereo plugged into wiring harness for the standard stereo a couple wires for the amplifier in the back but this guy is what we're looking for this antenna wire right here so we're going to trace this down exactly where we're going to run it and yeah i assumed there's hard to see some clips back in there that are holding it in place so it might be a little bit of a pain in the ass but I think we can get to it and get it out of there. You can see that one right there where that white tape is. There's definitely some clips in there pulling that wire in there. So we're gonna have to just trace it down, track it down, and then go from there. Hopefully we can just make this smooth. I might just cut it and rerun it however I want. Make it easier for myself, so see how it goes. So that was one of the most painful processes I've gone through was installing this thing, but we got it. It's kind of cool. Um, getting it through there and up and in was a pain because there's not much room to work with in there. And the angle of the truck, 
it's kind of got a little gap on the bottom there. Um, it doesn't allow the screw that came with it to go far enough in to attach to the antenna. So um, I had to use a different screw and use a grinder and kind of like smooth off the top and round it out and all that stuff. But now we're working on running this wire through the hole there and I think I'm just gonna zip tie it too. I cut the old one, zip tie the new one to the old one and pull it through so it'll run the same path. But there's a little grommet that goes there to keep dirt and dust and water and whatever out. And those aren't very malleable. I don't know if you've ever worked with them. There's one right up here. So to make it malleable, we have it boiling in some water so we can make it kind of like pliable and malleable so we can actually shove this plug through it. And then that way, once we get the wire ran through, we can put the grommet back in and everything will be good to go. All right, so that hot water trick works like a dream. So now, got the old cable coming out. I zip tied, I stuck the end of the antenna plug in there and zip tied it real tight. And now I'm going to electrical tape over it and make a smooth pass. That way when we pull it through, it'll just be one smooth motion and follow the original path, hopefully. And we get it in there and make it all work. The antenna looks good. Hopefully we'll just have to kind of pull this cable, the old one, and it should just kind of bring everything over and in, and then we can just button everything back up. Well, that ended up working out pretty well with the zip tie and the electrical tape. Um, another panel that I pulled was the one right above the glove box here, and the black, this guy, All right? And, uh, yeah, I just pulled that off so that way I can get up in that access and all that. And the pre-existing antenna goes way up and over. You can see there's like a structured bar here or like a roll bar for stability. It goes way up over that above the airbag and everything and then comes down in. So I'm not going to run it that way. I'm going to run it just straight across here and then into the dash. Right, so you can see cables coming down from the antenna up there, and it's just gonna go right in here through the hole. We'll attach that grommet real good so no dust and dirt, water, whatever gets kicked up in there. this one right here so it comes up from way down in there well, I wouldn't say way down but a few inches below right there a little above the kick panel but a little below the airbag and I just ran it like I said straight across here and behind and right here with the rest of the wiring so this antenna will reach either side depending on what type of stereo you put in, if I want to change it, or whatever the case may be, I might do that shortly. Get something with some Bluetooth capability so that way I can just hook up my phone and my music with no wires versus having wires. So now we're just going to put everything back together the way it was. All right, we got the radio in, so we're going to go ahead and just give it a shot. Definitely works better than the other uh, 
shitty antenna there. It was like halfway down, wasn't getting any kind of good signal. This is actually getting a better signal. This little cheap ass antenna that I mainly just bought for looks is working better than that other factory antenna because it was so shitty. Not much, not much static or anything, it's smooth. Wow. That works great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and button everything back up and then that's pretty much it for this video. Again, um, hope that helps with anybody that's having any issues. Thanks for watching.